Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. As you know, my name is Mary Baker and welcome to episode 28, What Are Energy Drainers? And what a perfect time to kind of talk about this topic. It's a brand new year, 2020. And January is typically a time where we make resolutions and we want to get ourselves together. So all of January, we're going to be talking about what drains our energy versus what gives us energy and some great remedies to cure those energy drains. Okay, so before I get there, I just want to say thank you for a wonderful 2019 start to the podcast. The podcast is really growing. It's in a bunch of different countries now. I just think that's awesome. So I just want to express my gratitude for the wonderful support and for those of you spreading the word. Remember, the more people who listen to this, the better the world's going to be, right? Okay, so we're starting off 2020 with a focus on what is draining your energy. And of course, you know me, I'm going to first want to look at what are the real origins of energy drains? And then also, what are some remedies, right? So what are energy drainers? Because I think that even though it's an obvious question, there can be some misunderstanding as to what energy drains really are. I think they're anything that you want to address, confront, take care of, or blow up, but you keep procrastinating and don't do it. When you think of it or see it, it drains your energy. Whenever you are reminded, you feel negative, you feel tired, you feel frustrated. Sometimes energy drainers are in the background and we're not reminded they've become so chronic that we're low level and we don't even really notice it because we just get used to it. But when you are reminded, it's, oh, there's my reality. There's the car I didn't clean out. There's the dry cleaning I forgot to take this morning. It's also, though, not just stuff or things that you haven't gotten to do. It's anything, I think, that you put up with, that you swallow, that you don't address, that you tolerate. Energy drainers are also sometimes called by life coaches tolerations. You know, what are the tolerations in my life? Things you want to take care of, but you haven't yet. And here comes that internal conflict that you hear me talk about so much. You haven't yet, usually because you know it's going to mean change. It could possibly mean conflict. It's also because life gets too busy. And sometimes you haven't even stopped to notice that or why. Okay, so there's a the conceptual definition of energy drainers or tolerations. In this episode, we're going to talk about identifying energy drainers. And the rest of the month, we're going to unpack this with a lot more details. So the first most obvious one are the physical ones. And January is a great time to talk about decluttering, right? Physical clutter, paper, stuff, things you don't use anymore. Having too much stuff in your space. Not having gone through and cleaned out or even cleaned. It's also those unfinished projects you started but never figured out how and when you were going to actually get them done. Or you were on a great course and then life showed up. There was an illness, there was a tragedy, there was a job loss, there are big things like that that can really wreak havoc on our plans when we're trying to get stuff done. So just assessing that, okay? Looking around in your physical environments, and we're going to talk about environments next month, and I really want you to take into consideration your space, your home, your car, your workspace, and know that you deserve something clean and serene. This isn't about status. It's about self-care. 
It's about being in reality. So another example are behaviors, like other people's behaviors, like boundary violators, people maybe you've just outgrown and can't face that yet. You know, what about the unhealthy chaos creators in your life? The ones who are always calling or texting or emailing, needing you for something or needing to share their latest victim story. I know that sounds harsh, but what about people you do too much for? What about people you do things for them that they ought, should, and could do for self? These are boundary issues, okay? Maybe you've lost yourself in a self-centered person or someone who's so myopic or someone who has some really strong narcissistic tendencies or is a manipulator and you've lost who you are and you're so caught up in going over their place and hanging out with them and doing for them that you have neglected your day-to-day stuff that you just brushed aside. You know, the things that you used to do to take care of yourself, like your spring cleaning or your filing or your organizing. So it really is kind of self-neglect when we get so caught up in other people's stuff. That's a whole nother session, but I think you get the sense of what I mean. So, of course, the next thing I'm going to say is toxic people. I mean, that's the ultimate, right? Manipulators, controllers, people who are emotionally abusive, people who want or need to keep you stuck. Even if it means they're miserable and they just want you to be there with them. Because don't we all? Misery loves company, remember? So really looking at toxicity, we're going to get more into that um, when we get into toxic environments next month. But just take a mental note that that's the ultimate because when we're in toxic relationships, we're going against ourselves because our real self knows that we need and deserve better. Our real self knows that with toxic people, there's going to be drama. There's going to be conflict. It's really hard to get things done because there's constant chaos. And you taking care of yourself usually doesn't go over well. It's really unhealthy people because they're not taking care of themselves. So that's, you know, one area you can look at. So moving over to another area, mental clutter, you know, just too much on your mind. Too many apps open in the background is what my husband calls it because I can get that way. And I got to shut down some of the apps and say, nope, let me just have one or two open. That's enough. You know, we can be focused on old news. We can be focused on things that happened. I have clients who tell me all the time, especially ones who struggle with social anxiety, that they'll obsess about conversations they had and wish they had done it differently or behaved differently. Maybe you're focused on that unfinished business. You know, the biggest energy drainer, they say, for most of us is Having unfinished business, you know, the things that I've already talked about, but also maybe just things we haven't dealt with or confronted, maybe difficult conversations, asking for a raise, saying no to someone, a lot of the boundary work. This is mental clutter. It's in the background. These are unresolved issues. And of course, what about your focus on others? That will be sure to fill up your radar and stay there on your radar because you have no power at all to change them or even to get them to want to change or even think about changing. So make sure your radar is not filled up with other people. It should be things that are actually within your control that have to do with you. The only people we should be taking care of are people who can't take care of themselves, i.e. small children maybe an elderly parent who is ill. Everyone else needs to take responsibility for themselves. Another one is emotional negativity. You know, we may not realize the impacts, but you believe everything that you hear, see, do, and say, and you create beliefs by habitually hearing, seeing, doing, and saying things. Thoughts are things, beliefs make them so, is the phrase that I've heard especially what you tell yourself. If you 
say shaming or negative things to yourself, even if it's in your own heart, every time you see that thing that you haven't taken care of, you're going to hurt your self-esteem and your motivation, ironically, to take care of it because you're going to fulfill the prophecy. So make sure you watch your words. Try to spin it to the positive opposite because, was it Henry Ford said, if you think you can or you can't, you're right. So be careful what you think about. Of course, you're going to be frustrated with yourself. Then make a plan or put it on the list that you know you're not going to get to this month. Just get honest with yourself and be nice to yourself at the same time. Other areas are daily, weekly, monthly tasks that you haven't done because you struggle with self-discipline around your boundaries and your choices, i.e. self-management. Time management is really self-management. So maybe not sticking to routines to make sure that the little things got done because now the little things are a mountain. Clutter is a great example of that. Paying bills on time is a great example of that. Not creating more chaos. The first order of business when we look at energy drainers is please just stop the bleeding first. And then, then figure out what's causing the bleeding. Trying to multitask is a part of this too. You know, multitasking is a lie. You know, it's not a good idea. If you really have to, you have to. But if you're trying to do way too much, then I think you're secretly angry and afraid of saying no, of not being able to do it all by putting too much on yourself. And therefore, that's going to blow up, right? Because that's not reality. You're not going to do anything well. And so you end up more frustrated and probably more behind the eight ball. So those are some typical areas of energy drains. I'm sure there are more I want you to kind of think of ones in your life. Even if you just hit one category, I know that if you take care of that category, you'll move on to other categories in your life. So why does this matter? Well, energy drainers and tolerations have a huge impact on us that we don't even recognize at first. I mean, the obvious one first is the emotional mental stress, not being able to sleep well, having a hard time focusing and concentrating. You're probably not in a great mood if you're dealing with the stuff we just talked about, especially if you're dealing with toxicity. And I think also equally as valuable, you know, especially if you're dealing with lack of self-discipline, because there's no way you can have great self-esteem and not have good self-discipline. It's just impossible. People often deal with a big increase in anxiety and depression, panic attacks, not being able to get out of bed, things like that, because they're not taking care of themselves and they're not honoring what's really going on. Because another area here is pent up emotion. You know, a lot of times if we're not dealing with reality, we're also not expressing what we really think, need and feel either, right? So it makes sense that your body is going to play this out because this hammers your self-confidence. And of course, all this emotional mental stress is going to manifest into physical stress, especially if you're not dealing with it. If you're not talking about it, if you're not sharing with others how you feel about it, a mini confession there and contrasting that with how you'd like to feel and what you'd like to get done and how you'd like to see yourself, your body's going to play this out. And here's the math. Usually, if we struggle with self-discipline, we usually struggle with self-care. We usually end up burning the candle at both ends. We don't get enough rest or physical exercise or good nutrition. So, makes sense. There's also that buildup of toxicity in our bodies of all this stress. And it can lead to illness, you know, not just feeling worn down, but you know, back pain, GI issues, migraines, and even some more serious illness as well. So this is no joke. This is not just a surface issue. And the other final thing I want to say, one of the impacts is we know that when we have all that crap going on, how in the world are we going to be able to really commit 
to take serious steps towards goals that we have, we forget about the impacts of not having discipline around our energy drains. The first thing, how are you going to have any mental energy to put towards your goals? How are you going to have any time to really think clearly and to plan and to tackle these things? How are you going to have time to create those goals and find a way to really follow them? So first, we have to create space. Mental space, physical space, emotional space, by getting rid of what is draining us, what we're tolerating first, before we can jump on the new things. And even deeper, you're not going to feel like you deserve good stuff if you're not taking care of business and you know that. It's kind of hard to do that when your self-esteem is in the toilet. I mean, how would you feel confident enough to go risk tackling new goals if you're secretly really pissed at yourself or disappointed in yourself. So I just wanted to say that as well. So how does this happen? I mean, first of all, these things usually happen slowly and insidiously over time. It's not overnight. Overnight, your brain would have the sense of novelty and it would notice it. It'd be traumatic, right? And you would probably take care of it right away. You know, things that really blow up, oh yeah, we're all over that, because we see it, it's obvious. But when it's slow and insidious, and the clutter creeps in bit by bit, and you slowly stop taking care of the car, or paying the bills, or taking care of your physical body, or putting up with that person and not saying no, you see what I mean? It just becomes chronic. And the way our brains adapt, right, to our environments, it will just adapt. It won't notice it over time. You won't even see it anymore. Other people will see it. So then you're not going to see it until it gets really bad, okay, to where you can't walk in your house because there's so much stuff. Or you realize someone wants to come over and hang out and you're terrified of the way your house looks. So know that and don't be hard on yourself, okay, If you're like, oh my God, how did I get this bad? Well, there's one of the reasons that you did. Your brain adapts. The other reason is on some level, maybe you grew up where it wasn't normal for people to really be organized and take care of themselves either. You know, maybe they just reacted to life and put out fires all the time. So you could have modeled some of that behavior as well. That's pretty typical. The biggest thing, though, I think, is going against yourself is going to lower your self-trust. So getting this together is huge, and it's going to feel so good once you start tackling it. The other big thing I want to talk about is procrastination and avoidance. That's another big piece and why we carry around this huge ball and chain of energy drainers more than the next person would. Because we want to take action, but oftentimes, if we take action on these things, we're going to have to create some drama. We may have to blow up some things. People might be pissed at us. And so if we're avoiding conflict, if we're avoiding things we're not ready to confront because we're not ready to confront, then we'll kick the can. We know we need to take care of that, but we're afraid to. And then here's the kicker, right? The longer we get away from the moment we should have taken care of it, you know how that gets like a hell of a lot harder to do? Because then you feel even more embarrassed. Then you feel even less confident and motivated. So we create our own energy drainers by not addressing things right away. We delay, we procrastinate, we avoid, and then that kills our self-esteem when we remember how we're avoiding reality and not facing it. I mean, how are you going to believe in yourself if you don't face things? It's kind of tough. But that's why boundary work is really, really important here. And if you're just joining the podcast With this episode, I strongly encourage you to go back to the boundary episodes early on in the series and make sure you're really familiar with boundary work and kind of know where you are with that first, because it's going to be really hard to tackle your energy drainers if you don't understand the concept of boundaries and have a decent handle on it. Because we need to say no. 
We need to tell ourselves no. We need to get into some serious reality. We need to see what's really possible to accomplish. And we need to know that honoring what we need really matters. The other piece to that is detachment. Learning to let go and detaching from what others may need or want or have goals for you. That's another area that we don't often talk about, do we? What we think we should be doing because they want us to do it, but we really don't want to do it, so we don't do it. You know that passive-aggressive, quote-unquote, forgetting to take care of something? You might want to take a serious look at that. Do you really want to take care of it? Is that yours or does that idea belong to them? So as you can see, once you start opening the can on energy drainers, boy, you can find lots of insidious little areas that drain our energy. And so it's really interesting. It's not just decluttering. It's really going deeper and looking at your emotional attachments That's what really matters, looking at your boundaries, because self-discipline is really just internal boundaries, saying no to ourselves, facing reality, embracing reality, and learning to be okay with that. It's going to feel more grown up. We're going to feel more solid and grounded. And there's not a lot of things swirling in your mind because you've already taken care of them. And everything you tackle is going to help you feel like you can tackle everything else. So like I said earlier, we're going to unpack these more specifically in the next couple of episodes. But I did want to talk about conceptually how we tackle this. The first thing I really think is important is a really good, clear gut level assessment of self, like being really honest with ourselves. And you've heard me describe before I want you to line up the dominoes. And what I mean by that is the current symptom is not the origin. Usually go back like three or four dominoes or maybe even 16 to find out, oh, that's how this happens. For example, if your house is a mess, it didn't just get that way in one day, right? It probably goes back to, oh, yeah, that's right, because I didn't clean last weekend. Why didn't I clean last weekend? Go back another domino. Oh, because I went over my sister's house and took care of her kids. And, oh, why am I doing that? Oh, because she's being irresponsible. And do you see now you've got a whole different issue to deal with? It's boundaries. I got to say no to my sister first. Then I can be home for the weekend. Then I can clean my house. Then my house will be nice. So there's a very simplistic little scenario of how you can go back more and more dominoes. Find out... What are the origins that are either creating chaos or what's getting in the way for you to take care of things and have time and energy to take care of things in a timely manner? The other thing is this is an ongoing thing. So we need daily, weekly, monthly awareness to keep up on things because a lot of energy drainers oftentimes are the little niggly things that we have to do every month that we don't want to do or every day, and it piles up. So I just want to say this is not a one off. I mean, sometimes we're really good at like scouring the house and cleaning it out. But maintaining that takes commitment. Maintaining that's a whole different deal. That's making some serious decisions there and following through on them, right? The other remedy is mindfulness. And again, this is not about getting into perfect. This is about just being more mindful of what you might be struggling with. And then finally, we're going to talk about in later episodes about how do you experiment with different, you know, things that work for you to see how you can tackle these things. So in the next three weeks, we're going to get into each of these. And I just want to encourage you, if you're going to do this, just it's fine to lay out your plan, but I want you to be realistic and don't do the all or nothing and just start where you can start. You've heard me say, paint one room in the house, guaranteed you're going to want to paint everything else because it's going to look dingy compared to just start somewhere. Start with an area that you think you actually can tackle because remember, And I always say, empowerment comes from doing. 
And even if you only have the balls to clean your house first, that's totally fine because that is going to make you feel better about yourself, which in turn is going to make you feel stronger to confront the really tough things, right? Like maybe confronting that person, maybe setting boundaries. You know, we got to get our shit together first so we feel grounded enough within ourselves and we feel good about ourselves and we raise our self-esteem and we lower our guilt and shame. So just, I encourage you to do that self-care piece first. Do what seems doable first. Okay, so I want to do an exercise with you. I have a sentence stem exercise that I'd like to finish this episode out with. And if you're walking or driving, etc., it's okay. You know, we're just doing this to raise awareness and you can download it later to do some actual writing. So that's fine. But if you're in a space where you can grab a pen and paper, I always encourage handwriting instead of typing if you can. Something different happens in the brain when we do that. But if you can't, that's all right. Just notice what comes up in your heart. Okay, so if you're not familiar, I want you to take a moment to consider four to six quick endings to the sentence starters or stems that I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you three of them. If you haven't done these, just write or think what immediately comes up. Either positive, it could be negative, it could be neutral, it could be a mixture, it doesn't matter. And I want you to come up with the answers as fast as you possibly can without thinking too much about it because that way we don't censor it, we don't filter it, we don't PC it. It tends to be closer to our core truth. And that's what I mean by raising awareness. We're just raising awareness just to see what kind of truth might come up. And so that's how that works. Okay, you ready? Number one, if I were to take a look at my energy level lately and what might be draining it, if I were to take a look at my energy level lately and what might be draining it, Number two, taking good care of me means taking good care of me means And number three, if I were to take some committed action to address energy leaks in my life, if I were to take some committed action to address energy leaks in my life, Okay, so take a look at your answers. What came up for you? And were you surprised? I encourage you to download the rest of them and take some time to do them several times this week because you might have some stuff keep popping up, which means, right, we should look at it. But you might have some new stuff come up. And that can often happen once we start gathering the courage to open the can to really get honest with ourselves. That's when some deeper and deeper truths can come up because your psyche ain't going to let anything come up that you can't handle. So just want to encourage you to continue to do that. Again, this is not to be hard on yourself. This is just to raise awareness. All right, today we talked all about the concept of energy drainers or energy tolerations, what they are and the impacts on our lives if we don't take care of them. We talked about how, you know, some of the 
culprits are procrastination and avoidance. And I encourage you, if you do really struggle with that, get some help, get some loving accountability and do some healing around that because there are very, very good reasons why you struggle with those two things. And they often go with perfectionism and paralysis. So there are childhood reasons usually that cause that. And a lot of that is not your fault. So I think it's really important to look at the context so you can heal it. And of course, take responsibility for tackling it so you can feel good about it. All right. So if you want to download the sentence stems, and there are a few more on there, like I said, Just go to ownitpowercast.com and look at the show notes page for this episode. There you can sign up to get the downloads if you don't already belong to the tribe. If you are already a subscriber and signed up for the tribe news, you will get that email to you automatically every Tuesday. You'll get the newsletter, which is really cool. has the blog on there. You can listen to the episodes directly there, or it'll take you to the website And you can hit the downloads right there as well, usually in PDF form. So everything is there for you. I try to keep it as simple and as straightforward and consistent because I know I like those things. So if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, um, there's a place there you can email me too. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how this podcast is helping you. And I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts. So If you are really finding this podcast helpful, positive reviews really matter. Thank you so much for those of you who have already done so. And remember, you'll be helping others find this podcast and get the help that they need as well, right? All right, so happy 2020. Pay it forward. Keep focusing on you and see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.